Hey guys, it's Bub here, and in this video we're taking a look at Micro 11 24H2. Back in August of 2023, we took a look at Micro 11 23H2, but obviously there's been some changes to this OS that I'm really excited to take a look at here. In the past, this is an X-Lite distribution of Windows. We have taken a look at these in the past, and typically I haven't really been that impressed with them, just because of the amount of, I don't want to say bloat, but branding that they come with. I mean, we're starting off strong here, and we can see this beautiful branding. Sarcasm, by the way. Um, I wish that they wouldn't brand their OS's like this because we're not really breathing new life into our PC and you know they're branding their YouTube channel everywhere and their website. Um, but I digress, we'll go ahead and get into the installer and see what this is like. Alright, so we are installing Windows X Lite Micro 11 24H2 V3, that is a mouthful, from December 6, 2024. So we are a few months out of date here, but this is the latest version on the X Lite website. We're going to go ahead and click continue. And that was it. We're now installing Windows and we'll be back once we either get into the out of box experience or the desktop. All right, and here we are in the desktop of Micro X Lite 11. Um, as we can see, the only thing I've done is install VMware tools that did not come out of the box. I just went ahead and did that off camera. But here we are. And the first thing I notice is obviously this gigantic blue wallpaper. I don't believe this comes in Windows 11 by default. It looks a little bit different than what we see with Windows 11, but nonetheless, it is still really cool. On the desktop, we have our recycle bin by default, and notice that when I open that, I don't have any animations. They removed animations for who knows what reason. Um, then we have an extra and info folder. We have all sorts of things like desktop shortcuts. We have printing enabler, so I'm assuming that's off by default for, I don't know, RAM consumption. Uh, fix the Xbox sign-in, so I'm assuming that doesn't work by default. They then have guides that will allow you to, I guess, learn how to use the OS. It's just a website, but for some reason, VMware Tools isn't letting me open it. We then have the Microsoft Store installer because we don't have that. We have installers for web browsers, which is really convenient because there's not a web browser in here by default, and it's really hard to get an installer on here if you don't have a web browser. You'd have to use a USB or an FTP server. Here we have, you can enable or disable widgets as well as actually install widgets. We have registry tweaks for things like the snap bar, uh, that's probably not what I'm thinking of. Snap layouts. Yeah, that's gone by default. I don't have the layouts here. And then a button to enable the ink workspace. We then have Xlight info. So again, more promotional branding, their username, their website, the Ko-Fi, and Xlight info, which again, you want to donate. It's just, I, I can't, I don't like with the, the way they plaster their brand all over this. Then we have various wallpapers here that we'll take a look at. Scrolling through, we have the default one, we have that. That kind of looks like a macOS wallpaper, another custom, and kind of like a remake on Bliss. Overall, those are some pretty nice wallpapers. Down here on the taskbar, we can see it does look a little bit different from what we see in traditional Windows 11. It is shorter, and the font is different. So by default, the time has seconds showing, and when you click on the time, it does actually bring up the notification center. Each of these little panes, so the volume as well as the network, are separate. They're combined in Windows 11, but they're separate in this build, but they both open the same thing. So I think they should just be combined again because I don't see a point in separating them. We then have our Bluetooth settings, which opens the Bluetooth pane. And then one thing I'm noticing with this taskbar is it's glitchy. Like I have to manually close that. So if I open Bluetooth and I click the up arrow, Bluetooth doesn't just go away automatically. Um, I'm also seeing that there are Bluetooth devices already paired, it looks like. Um, I don't know what that's about. Headphone, headphone, and Bluetooth headset. These, I don't know why these are here. I don't have any Bluetooth devices around me, but that's interesting. And then we have our safely remove hardware and eject media. As we saw, widgets are disabled, so we don't have any widgets. And right-clicking on the taskbar, we can see that we have our... Right clicking on the taskbar, we can see that it is more of a legacy menu. We don't get that traditional Windows 11 one. Clicking on properties, it doesn't actually take us to the traditional start bar, to, to, to the traditional taskbar settings. It brings up start all back. Because I was going to look and see if we could enable like the search bar or anything. Um, but no, it's like this. We can change the start button if we wanted to. Um, we could change icon size, all sorts of fun things. I mean, yeah, we can make the Windows taskbar the way that it should be. Um, but I do believe it was set to meet. No, it was set to large. I just need to quit screwing with things here. 
Opening the start menu, and it reminds me of why I didn't like X Lite from the start, because I never understood the purpose of installing another start menu or installing another taskbar when the one in Windows 11 worked perfectly fine. And if the goal is to create a tiny ISO, I don't know why you would go in and install other applications and other things instead of just remove the bloat from the existing Windows install. So let's take a look at what we have here. On the, on the right side, we have what we'd see like in Windows 7. We have our admin, that's our home folder, documents, pictures, music, downloads, this PC. We have that sort of stuff. Um, we have our switch user, sign out, lock, restart, and sleep. Then over here on the left side, we have our apps. So we have File Explorer. We have our accessibility settings, get started settings, Windows backup, nothing in startup, traditional Windows accessories, Windows PowerShell, Windows System. I did not mean to open that. Uh, Windows tools, and then we have XLite tools like File tr Explorer, Transparency, WinArrow, Tweaker, Firewall, Print Spooler, and the Windows Update Service. While we are in Task Manager that I opened accidentally, let's go ahead and take a look at our RAM and CPU utilization. So CPU, it's traditional Windows, we're hovering around 6-4%. Memory, we're using 1.3 out of 2 gigs. Because this is supposed to be a light OS, I gave it the default VMware specs, so 2 gigs of RAM and we're using 1.4 out of those two gigs, so not very good. Now, let's go ahead and take a look at our disk usage to see what we're using on that front. So we are actually using 3.8 gigabytes, and we have a 60 gig drive, so we have 56 gigs free, so that's not bad. That is significantly less than a traditional Windows 11 install. And the ISO itself, at least the, at least the ISO, is only 1.55 gigabytes, so again, really small compared to a traditional Windows 11 ISO. Let's go ahead and open Winver here, and let's see that, yep, they even customized this, so it says Xlite Micro 11. It is 24H2, build 26100-2454. And let's see, last thing, if we can get into Windows Update. So Windows Update is gone, um, so we can't actually update this. And I am noticing that the OS, it does say Optimum 11, uh, which is another Xlite build, so it looks like they're just copying Xlite builds. Uh, and reusing them at this point. So that being said, definitely let me know in the comments below what you think of this OS, and if you have any video suggestions for the future, please leave them down in the comments below because I do look at those, and you may see one of your recommendations in the future. With that being said, thank you for watching this video. If you liked it, make sure to drop a like and subscribe if you're new around here as I do all kinds of different technology videos, including device restorations. That being said, I'll see you all in the next one.